from the police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 21, regarding a murder. The mutilated body of a young woman had been found on Montecito Street. That's all. Rose and Quirk. to let you overhear a conversation between an inquisitive young man and an officer of one of the 262 Los Angeles radio cars. Gee, I'd like to have a job like yours. Well, Sonny, uh, it does get kind of exciting sometimes. How long does it take you to get to a hold-up or something after Rosenquist tells you about it over the radio? Well, they tell us at headquarters that it takes an average time of about 2 minutes and 25 seconds. Boy, oh boy, that's traveling. <laughs> Pretty fast, all right. A uh, lot faster than sure since they let us put this Rio Grande crack gasoline in our tanks. This conversation might have occurred in many other cities and counties in Southern California and Arizona. You, too, can get this police car performance for your car at no extra cost by switching to Rio Grande crack with Petra Ethel. Just try a tank full tomorrow. Tonight, Chief James E. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department has brought as his guest a distinguished peace officer whom he will introduce, Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. In a recent statement broadcast throughout the state by Clarence Morrow, Chief of the State Bureau of Criminal Identification, the fact was made known for the first time in the history of the state that major crime is being reduced throughout California mainly as a result of better police methods and greater cooperation between peace officers. Tonight we bring you a story which tells more plainly than words how far-reaching the hand of the law really is and which indicates the extent to which peace officers throughout the world cooperate with one another in order that justice may be made to prevail. In this city and county, the police department and the sheriff's office are the two law enforcement agencies constantly at work to protect your property and lives. The need for cooperation between these organizations is self-evident, and it affords me great pleasure to bring to you tonight the head of the sheriff's office, Sheriff Gene Biskulus, who played such an important part in the investigation of the crime and escape of Clara Phillips. I am happy to introduce to our radio audience, Gene. Thanks, Jim. Good evening, friends. It is a pleasure for me this evening to be the guest of my friend, Chief Jim Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department. In past programs over this radio station, Chief Davis has assured you that there is always a perfect cooperation between the various law enforcement agencies in our county, as he did this evening. And I want to confirm these statements, because in my 27 years' experience, I have never known a more harmonious relationship to exist between the different departments and police work. While the sheriff of a county has local jurisdiction in law enforcement matters, his responsibilities are not wholly limited to the boundaries of the county. It sometimes happens that he must assume responsibility in cases which take him into other parts of the state or country, and sometimes even into distant foreign lands. In the story which will be given you tonight, one of these cases is presented. It was necessary to follow the flight of a fugitive from Los Angeles to the Central American country of Honduras. In fact, this case was publicized in nearly every part of the world 
before the criminal was finally located. The United States has extradition treaties with other countries, and it often rests upon the sheriff of the county where the crime was committed to secure proper papers from Washington and serve them upon the government where the fugitive has taken refuge. This is not always a simple task, but I'm going to let you judge that for yourselves as you listen to the following program. Thank you, Sheriff Bistolini. July 12, 1922. Clara Phillips, attractive young matron, and her friend Betty Maple are in an automobile parked at the entrance of a downtown bank. She'll bring me up soon. She wouldn't come out if she knew what she was waiting for. I'll say she wouldn't. We'll teach her to play around with other women's husbands. Give her a scare. She'd be forgetting a long time. That handle was a good idea. Yeah, but we ought to use it on her. A little tramp. Hey, do you still feel those drinks as much as I do? Sure. That stuff stays with you. Isn't that how coming out now? Look, over there. Yeah, that's all right. Alberta! Oh, Alberta! Alberta Meadows! Hello, Clara. Hello, Betty. Oh, come on, Alberta. Jump in. Let's go places. Okay. Find out, you dirty little homewrecker. But, Clara, what do you mean? Just that Betty. What do I mean? Yeah, what do you mean? I don't understand. Well, I'll tell you. I mean my husband. That's what I mean. You've got to let him alone. Do you get that? Oh, you must be crazy, Clara. There's nothing between Alma and me. And I know different. But I tell you there's Shut nothing. up and listen. You can't come into my friend's house. Oh, and you're both drunk. There's no use talking to you. Don't let her get out of the car. Uh, she won't get away. Let go of me. Let me go, I say. You're going to listen to us. I can have you arrested for this. Give me that thing, Betty. I'll teach her a Let lesson. Let go of me. Take <laughs> that. Oh, Maybe don't. I don't like you better with a black eye. Oh, you dirty little pig. Oh, don't hit me again. I'll beat you to a pole. Don't me. Oh, don't. 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 Late that same afternoon, Mrs. Fred A. Weiss is driving past the lonely spot on Montecito Street in the Lincoln Heights District when she is horrified to see the battered body of a young woman lying at the side of the road. She reports her gruesome discovery to the police. And officers Hill and Corcoran hurry to the scene, followed closely by Lieutenant Hagenbaugh and Sergeant Ross. A degenerate fiend is suspected. And a county-wide search is instituted to capture him. But meanwhile, in the office of Attorney John D. Hart, in the California building. Mr. Phillips, to see you. Mr. Hart. Show him in, please. Hello, Armour. How's things? I'm in an awful jam, John. I need your advice. Why, what's the matter? John, do you know that girl they found murdered? Yes. That's Alberta Meadows. Clara killed her. What? It's, why, it's impossible, Armour. Clara couldn't. She did. She told me. It's insane, I know, but she was terribly jealous. What am I going to do, John? What can I do? Well, there's only one thing to do. You mean to? Of course. I mean surrender. Oh, but I can't. You've got to, Armour. No, John. Now listen. Gene Biskelews, the undersheriff, is a good friend of mine. We're going up and talk to him right now. Clara Phillips meanwhile, has boarded a train bound for Mexico. But the sheriff's office sends out a description of her, and she is taken from the train to Tucson. Sheriff Traeger swears in his wife as a special deputy in accordance with the law requiring a woman police officer to transport a woman prisoner. Together, they journey to Tucson and bring Clara back to Los Angeles for trial. Clara and Betty each accuse the other of the actual killing. But in court... Betty turns state's evidence. And upon her testimony, Clara Phillips is found guilty of second-degree murder and sentenced to San Quentin. Her case is appealed, and she is held in the old county jail awaiting the decision of the higher court. But the case of Clara Phillips has only begun. 
for Clara does the seemingly impossible and escapes. The whole country rings with the name of Clara Tillis. The sergeant's office contacts every police department in the world in an effort to apprehend her. Investigators learned that a man named Johnson has effected her escape and fled with her. The Los Angeles examiner contributes large sums of money to aid in the work of sending her pictured likeness into the far corners of the earth. But Clara Phillips seems to have dropped out of existence. Nevertheless, the sheriff's office continues its blind, apparently fruitless search for her. Then a clue comes. Pardon me, Sheriff. Here's something on the Phillips case. What is it? Another nut letter? It's from a fella in two, uh, two, well. Here, let me have it. The Gusta Galpa. Hmm, that's the capital of Honduras, isn't it, Gene? That's right. You read it. A Biscalus is no more Spanish than a Traeger. <laughs> well, I'll try it. Let's see. Hmm. Hey, this looks like something. What is it, Gene? Wait till I get the rest of it. This chap's a government clerk down there, and he's reporting two American girls and a man. Mm, the other would, girl would be Clara's sister. It isn't just coincidence that she disappeared right after Clara did. Right. He says he particularly noticed them because they wore riding breeches. That apparently caused a sensation among the conservative Spaniards. He's compared the girl with a picture on our poster, and he's convinced that she's Clara Phillips. So the road leads to Honduras. We'll wire the Honduran police to hold the suspects in custody and send us their fingerprints for verification. The art of fingerprinting is unknown in Honduras, so the sheriff is unable to obtain definite proof that the suspect held in the Central American Republic is actually Clara Phillips. However, acting upon the chance that she is, under Sheriff Biscalouz, Walter Hunter, senior deputy of the Homicide Squad, and Mrs. Biscalouz, sworn in as a special deputy, make the long and arduous trip to Honduras to claim the prisoner. They arrive in the sleepy little capital of Tegucigalpa to find a temporary government in power as a result of one of the not infrequent revolutions. Accompanied by Zuniga Huerta, the Honduran Minister of Justice, they hasten to the quarters above the office of the Commandante of Police, where Clara and her sister, Mary Jane Edwards, are held. Who is it? It is I, Senor Huerte. May I praise the audience with you, gracious lady? Oh, yes, Senor. Come in. Ah, well, of course, Senora. I have brought with me two gentlemen who say they are the old friends of yours. Hello, Clara. And Mary Jane. Well, well, you girls are a sight for sore eyes. Senor... Who are these men? Oh, they say they are the friends, that they know you from Los Angeles. Why, I never saw them before in my life. Senor, as if you have been fooling me. Oh, that's I... an old dodge, the Senor Huerte. Clara can't get away with it long. She knows it's all right. Senor Huerte, I demand that you take these strangers from my quarters at once. Well, well, no prisoners can make demands in this country. Oh, calm, eh? gentlemen, there must be some mistake. And I might say I am angry that you have betrayed my confidence oh, in come you. come on, senor. Let's cut the comic opera stuff. Listen, Clara. I want you to know that we're glad we found Mary Jane with you. Now the mystery of that jailbreak is explained. Why, you... Yes, Clara, you know what a stretch Mary Jane can get for aiding a fugitive from justice. Listen, you can't pin anything on Mary Jane. She didn't help me escape from the... I thought you'd blurt it out, Clara. Well, senor, have we made a mistake? You've heard the lady's own confession. Even so, I am not uh, convinced of the lady's guilt. Oh, is that so? Well, how have you determined her innocence? Very simple. Anyone with such a charming sister could not be guilty. A handy thing to have a sister, eh, Clara? Yeah. You don't understand. Senor Waitie has been very kind. He's been a very good friend of ours. Mmm, much gracias. I am happy to hear you say that, uh, Senorita. Nevertheless, Senor Waitie... We're going to take these ladies back to California with us. So? There is the little matter you gentlemen forget. The extradition papers have not yet arrived from Washington. Hmm? The mails are so slow from the court. Very well. We'll wait. 
Well, you may wait a long time. Okay with us, Flower. But when we go back, you're going with us, and so is Mary Jane. My sister didn't do anything. I know that, Clara. And I know something else. It was a guy by the name of Johnson. Where is he? Oh, he got arrested as a revolutionist. Uh, can't keep out of trouble, eh? How long had you known him before he sprung you, Clara? I never saw him before he put that ladder up to my stall window and sawed the bars. What was the big idea, then? He just thought I was innocent and wanted to help me. Well, that doesn't sound very likely. Well, it's true. Well, we can look into that when we go back. Oh, not when we go back, Sheriff. If we go back. The days pass. The Los Angeles officers learn that they are in a precarious position. Zuniga Huete is openly opposed to them. The president of Honduras is friendly to them, but ineffectual. He retires to his land whenever a crisis arises. The waiting becomes intolerable, but still the expedition papers fail to arrive. The American minister, Franklin Morales, visits the barracks with the Los Angeles Sheriff's Office. Well, when it rains down here, it certainly comes down hard. <laughs> When you've been down here as long as I have, you'll think this is a shower. You're in the tropics now, you know. Well, I wish we were on our way back to Los Angeles. Oh, we're in no hurry. I remarried James for Los Angeles, but I'd like to go away from here. This place frightens me. Is it the place or Whitey who frightens you? Well, I should like him for all he's done for her. But when he looks at me, I feel sick. Oh, don't be silly, honey. Come in. Ah, oh, good evening. It's a wet evening. Hmm, nevertheless, <laughs> it is a very good evening for the two so charming ladies. Well, what do you mean, senor? All day long I have been debating, and I have arrived at the decision. I shall hold you here no longer. You are at liberty to leave. Oh, really, senor, oh, waiting? Thank you, senor. Oh, it is nothing. But you can't do this, waiter. But I am doing it, senor. But the law. I am the law, senor. These ladies are free to leave the barrack. Well, you won't go very far tonight. Why not? Look out the window. The rain's coming down in sheets, and the streets are river of mud. Well, we've been here long enough that one more night won't kill us. But we'll leave in the morning. Perhaps that is better. In the morning, when the rain has stopped, I shall personally escort you to the hotel. And now, when the And do not look so angry with me, my friends. One must be gallant to a lady, no? <laughs> Well, what are we going to do now? Uh, I don't know, Jean. There's only one thing to do, boys. What's that, Morales? Get her out of here tonight. Extradition papers or no extradition Oh, well, no, you don't. Oh, yes, we do. Now, listen here, Clara. We haven't got extradition papers, so we can't take you without your permission. But you're going to give us that permission right now. Hey, you think I'm crazy? No, you're going to be sensible. Look at it this way, Clara. We've got nothing against you, personally. We pass no judgment. We aren't concerned with whether you're innocent or guilty. But you've been convicted in California. And it's our job, our duty, to bring you back there. And that's what we've got to do. What do I, what do I care about your duty? I'm not going. Oh, yes, you are. And here's why. You have no money, have you? Not much. All right, get this. When the extradition papers come, you're going to with us, Huayte or no Huayte. Mr. Morales will back me up in saying that once we get those papers, Washington will raise holy cane with Huayte until he has to give you up. That's right, Clara. Now, we have nothing against Mary Jane. And we have no official funds to take her back to California. If you come with us now, we'll take Mary Jane along. But if you complicate things, we'll leave her here, where Senor Huayte will probably continue his gallant attentions to her. Oh, you wouldn't leave me here alone. I I'd die. Think it over, Clara. It's tough for an attractive young American girl stranded in the tropics. You've probably seen the women around the cantinas. Well, not Mary Jane, Clara. I I'm afraid. Okay, boys. You win. I'll go with you. That's the stuff, Clara. You play ball with us, and we'll make things as easy as possible for you and Mary Jane. What's the next move, Mr. Morales? You'll have to work fast. There's a lot to do. Now, this rain will be over by morning. You better plan to leave at daylight for the coast. There's only a few automobiles in the town. I'll take care of hiring two of the fastest. They'll probably cost $500. Ooh, that's pretty steep rental. Mm -hmm. I know it. We've got to pay off in all directions down here. How about the local police force? Well, those ragged, barefoot Indians? You can be killed just as dead by a barefoot Indian as by anyone else, Walter. Right you are, Biscalouse. 
We'll have to do something about them. Let's hire them to be our guard. What do you mean? I've got an idea. They've been laughing at me for packing a flock of old deputy badges around. But I think I've got a use for them. I don't follow you. Well, watch. Hey, you. Yes, you. Sit in, will you, all of you? Thank our chief and two composers. Look, Gene, did you ever see a group of men like that in all your life? Never. These amigos. Senor Morales, he's Senor Biscalo, and I have just been saying that you're as fine a bunch of police officers as we've ever seen. Felicia, win it? All right. Well, anyhow, we certainly wish we had you working for the county of Los Angeles. Hey, what the... You see, my friend agrees with me. You see this badge? Oh, see, it is good badge, senor. No? Well, if you work for the county of Los Angeles, each of you would have a badge like this. And the county of Los Angeles would pay you well. A half dollar a day. Um, peso got a dia. Um, peso got a dia. Well, I just wanted you to know that we recognize fine policemen when we see them. Senor, we would like very much to work for the county of Los Angeles. You would? Si. Fine. Here are your badges. Now, we leave for Puerto Cortez at daybreak. You come with us. You'll be our guard. Father Ramos for la manana. Stealing out of Tegucigalpa at daybreak, the oddly assorted party slowly makes its way along the torturous, mud rutted highway toward the coast. Over rocky mountain passes and through reeking jungles, they push the laboring automobiles. At one point of the exhausting journey, they are ambushed by hostile natives. But finally, the squat building Huerta Cortez appear at the water's edge beneath them. Eager to reach the comfort of a hotel, they increase their speed. Oh. What's the matter? Guy with a gun in the center of the road, flagging us. Parece! Parece! In the name of the Republic of Honduras. What's the matter? These ladies. They are Senora Philip, the Senorita Edwards. Yes, they are. They have to be placed under arrest. Who says so? The Minister of Justice. I have a telegram to, from Zuniga Huete. His instructions are very clear. The ladies are to be held in a more prison so that you gentlemen may be relieved of guarding them and you may view our beautiful harbor. See, this looks bad. Yeah. I'm not too far from time. Oh, Senor Capitan. Eh? As you can see, the ladies are very tired. Won't you permit them to retire to the hotel for a while? Well, I do not know, Senor. It is very irregular. Mm, very well. But I shall accompany them. For they are under arrest in the name of the Republic of Honduras. Sheriff Biscalouz and the American consul in Puerto Cortez immediately wire the American minister in Tegucigalpa, Galpa, who gets the order to place the women in a war prison countermanded. Instead, Sarah and her sister are held in the guard at the hotel. Their guard is the same officer who had stopped them on the road. During the day, he consumes quantities of the cowpa. And that night in the hotel cantina, he acts the gallant with Clara. <laughs> Senora Pini, you are a most beautiful woman. <laughs> the most beautiful woman in the world. Get a load of the I wonder what he wants. Senora. I would be honored if you would come to my hacienda in the hill as my guest. Oh, Senor Capitan. But I am under arrest. Senora, I will tell you a secret. You are not under arrest any longer. The Supreme Court of Honduras must be after known to release you on the reach of every court. You hear that, Walter? Yes. We've got to work fast. We've got to get her to sign away. Yes, with. but how? I've got an idea. Come on. Oh, Clara. Yes? Will you yes? step out on the porch a moment? I, I want to talk to you. Oh, very well. Pardon me, Senor Capitan. I do you see your... I die without your friends. Clara, I heard what that monkey said. Yeah, well, what of it? You can't touch me now. I'm free. Yes, I understand that, Clara. Well, I want you to come back to Los Angeles with us willingly. Do you think I'm crazy? You're crazy if you don't. Listen, Clara. You haven't much dough, and you can't go very far. No matter where you do go, Walter and I will be right with you. We'll extradite you from any country in the world. We'll hound you. 
If you refuse to leave here, I'll send my wife back to Los Angeles and stay right here near you. If you go to another country, I'll follow you. I'll have you extradited. I'll stick on your trail for the rest of my life. Yes, but you... There isn't any but about it, Clara. That's what you've got facing you. Sure, Whitey likes you and your sister. Now, she'll get tired of you. The government will change, and then you'll be out in the cold. If you ask me, you're picking a devil of a life to lead. Oh, maybe you're right, but you can't make me go. I know that. I know. But you'll wish you had. Life down here with the law after you won't be much fun. Well, well what do you say? Well, Come on, well, give me your answer, Clara. I'll tell you what I'll do, sir. I'll go with you. Fine, now you're being sensible. But, on two conditions. What are they? First, that you'll tell everyone that I came back of my own free will. Certainly. And second, that if I come up for parole, you won't stand in my way of getting it. I promise, Clara. Then, it's a bargain. <laughs> following morning, arrangements are made to return on a fruit boat sailing that day. The loading is hurried so that no more technical slips of the amazing government of Honduras may detain the departure. Finally, there remains but the detail of paying off the private army Sheriff Hunter has hired. He lines up the motley crowd on the wharf. They are on the key, Miss Soldados. Attention! We are going to return to Los Angeles. So we will pay you your money now. You have been very good soldiers. You may keep your badges. But, senor, we wish to go back to the Los Angeles with you. I'm sorry, my friends. There's no more room on the boat. Oh, but we will sleep on the deck, senor. We will guard you in the Los Angeles. No, I'm afraid we cannot take you, amigos. But, senor, we like to work in the county of Los Angeles. Show me the water. They turn on the tower. It's sunk. Amigos. I have a duty you must still perform for the county of Los Angeles. What is this, Juan Senor? It is very important. You must guard the wharf until the boat is safe. And if you'll do that, well, maybe someday we can send for you. Oh, see. Boy, see. see. All right. See, all right. We guard the wharf, Senor. And we wait for you. Well, that's that. Come on, Clara. Come on, Mary Jane. We're off for Los Angeles at last. <laughs> incident in the bizarre story of the capture of Clara Phillips occurred when the ship on which she was being brought back to the United States was detained at New Orleans on suspicion of being a rum runner. However, when this complication was solved, Clara Phillips was quickly transported to San Quentin Prison, whence she was transferred to the new woman's prison at Tehachapi. The arm of the law is long. It is tireless. It is positive in its final effect. The ingenuity of the hunted criminal, who has all society against him, calls for the highest type of resourcefulness and intelligence in the peace officers who guard the interests of you citizens and the Los Angeles Police Department, as including some of the finest detectives in the world. Thank you, Chief Davis. Ladies and gentlemen, now is the time of year when car owners in Southern California and Arizona can get the most pleasure out of their machines. There are mountains, deserts, beaches, lakes. In fact, almost any beauty of nature is within short driving distance. But to make these trips easier on you and your car, why not switch to Rio Grande cracked gasoline with Tetra Ethel? The gasoline that has proved its superiority by the fact that it powers more police cars, ambulances, fire engines, motorcycles, and other emergency equipment in Southern California and Arizona than all other brands combined. For best results with crack, may we suggest that you try Sinclair Opaline motor oil. This great oil comes to you in tamper-proof extra major cans. It is extra refined to give you longer life Yet costs only 25 cents per quart, the price of ordinary bulk oil. Los 
Summit Police calling all cars, attention all cars, cancellation broadcast 21. The murderer of Alberta Meadows now in custody. That's all. Rolls and clips. Frederick Lindsley saying good night.